Well, hello everyone. I think we have everyone on the screen. Um, so yes, welcome to NHGI 2024 um, participant information session. So excited that you're here. Um, today is really just to share um, more information about the Institute, about Seattle, the University of Washington, um, and really welcome you to NHGI 2024. Um, so just to let you know, this meeting is recorded. There's some folks who couldn't make it. Um, so we'll send this out afterwards. You're welcome to review it again as well. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen, start with some introductions and get us into some content. Um, I will share too, at the end, we'll leave plenty of time. If anybody has any questions about Seattle campus, um, NHGI, the schedule, travel, all of those things, um, definitely save your questions and we'll get to those at the end. All right, so again, um, welcome to the National Housing Training Institute participation meeting or participant meeting. Uh, the Institute this year is going to be July 8th or 11th, uh, 2024. So excited to welcome you this summer. Uh, so just to tell you a little about our agenda for today, um, we're going to do some um, welcome remarks, some introductions. Um, we're going to talk about your time here in Seattle at the University of Washington. Um, we're going to go through each day of the schedule so you know what to expect um, during your time here. And then we have some next steps and some things to prepare before the Institute that we'll talk about as well. So to start with some introductions, um, I'll um, share. My name is Vicki Vandwerf, she, her pronouns. I am the Director of Residential Life at the University of Washington. I'm relatively new here. I started um, last summer. Um, from New York State and um, went to Colorado after that and have been in Washington for the last six years or so, um, but just started at the University of Washington about eight months ago. So excited to be here and excited to host the Institute. Um, but a couple other introductions that we wanted to share. Um, Spencer, do you want to say hi and then we'll... Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, Spencer Giese, he's through his pronouns, educational program manager at AKUI. If you've been getting any of COI emails about NHCI, they're from me. So thank you for checking those, reading those, responding to those. Uh, we're so glad that you've made it through the application process, selection process, registration process, and you are here. So we're thrilled to have you this year. If you have any, any technological questions that have to do with our mobile app or registration or just the COI generals and COI questions in general, feel free to send those my way. Thrilled to have you with us. Thanks, Spencer. All right, so we're going to start with just a welcome, some welcome remarks and introduction. We have Pam Schreiber here, who's the Assistant Vice President in Student Life and then Executive Director for Housing and Food Services here at the University of Washington. Um, Pam? Thanks, Vicki, and hello, everybody. Um, it's good morning for us, but I know for many of you, it's uh, either uh, early, late morning or early afternoon, but we are thrilled to kick off this Friday, spending it with you. Um, as Vicki said, I serve the University of Washington as Assistant Vice President for Student Life and Executive Director of Housing and Food Services. So it's HFS that is the host for the Institute for the next uh, three years, and we just couldn't be more thrilled. Um, first of all, we are so excited that the Institute is uh, is on the, the West Coast uh, of the country after many, many years of, of being uh, uh, sort of lopsided on the other side. Um, but I do have to uh, just sort of say that I'm partly responsible for that. Um, I um, uh, am a co-founder of the Institute and served as the co-director for the first 10 years when the Institute was at the University of Florida um, and uh, then was able to serve as faculty a couple of times after that as the Institute made its way around, uh, again, sort of the east side of the country. Um, really excited to share with you the beautiful Pacific Northwest and, of course, our amazing campus. Um, we are really um, excited and preparing for your arrival. We know that the most important part of this for you is the learning experience that you're going to have. Um, our job is to simply create the right kind of environment to make that enjoyable and very easy and very impactful for you. So super excited. Um, 
so happy uh, that you are joining us. Um, I'm uh, not going to be able to stay for our whole meeting, but I, I really appreciate this opportunity to drop in and welcome you. Thanks, Pam. And then next we have Josh Ganna. Josh is working with the faculty of the Institute and is um, a co-director with myself. So um, Josh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, everybody. Uh, Josh Ganna, he, him pronouns. Uh, I've been at University of Washington for uh, almost, well, 13 and a half years now. So um, just excited to welcome you to the campus. I can tell you the faculty group that has been put together is just top notch and they are really excited to get to know you and to start working with um, the clusters. So um, Vicki and Pam gave a warm welcome already. So I'll turn it back to you, Vicki. Thank you. All right, we also wanted to introduce you to our host committee. We meet on Zoom. So this is uh, one of our first Zoom photos um, of our meetings, but um, these are all the folks. We've added some more um, along the way as well who are helping to plan the Institute. Um, all these staff um, work with us at the University of Washington, um, some most inside of um, housing and food services, but um, some campus partners as well. Um, so all of these folks are working on coordination, um, transportation, room setup, um, you know, making sure the hospitality rooms are stocked um, and that you have a warm welcome. So we just wanted to um, put some faces um, to the host committee so you know who they are. And you'll definitely see those people um, you know, throughout the Institute as well as beforehand, we'll do some introductions on the event platform, which we'll talk about here in just a couple minutes. All right, so we have a short video for you. If you've never been to Seattle, or um, if you're interested in learning more about Seattle, this video will share um, just some, some tips, some highlights of the city um, and share you uh, with you what it has to offer. So hold on one second. I'm gonna make sure I share the sound on this so you can hear it. One second. Okay, here we go. Let me know if you can't hear it, but you should be able to now. Come as you are to this city of seven hills. This many faceted emerald, its myriad faces luminous in the sun. Yes, in the sun. The gray deepens our love of the light. From the roller skating mavens along Alki Beach, to the bald eagle sitting vigil atop Seward Park firs, to the gardens set golden by bonfires. We are a city of multitudes, without separation between the land and its people. Come as you are to the unseated home of the Duwamish, to a city pierced by a great fire that still echoes in the underground. Come to this city of soil and high rise, the city of 400,000 loud at pride and quiet corners of twice old tails and lounging cats, the city held in the colossal gaze of Mount Rainier and the sculpted brutalism of Freeway Park. Come to the city of opposites, we are broadened by our joinings, a city that holds the wild botanical expanse of an arboretum and a corpse flower carefully contained in the spheres. Come see how we needle the sky, our reach toward the space age, and how great herons hunt in a marsh in the shadow of mighty huskies at war. Come as you are to the city of heart, not cartoonish, but human, winding, durational, a real thing of flesh and blood. It thumps in an alley wall pockmarked with chewed gum in the chest of a troll stoically keeping its watch. In our unplanned streets that lead to sleepy, secret beaches. And it leaps with the migratory orca pods in Elliott Bay. And it is red 
Red in the center of knowledge. Red over koi and under Japanese weeping maple. Red in the sunsets over the Jose P. Rizal Bridge and in rusted gasworks giants. Come as you are to this evergreen field of play. We change and are changed by the connections that we make. However brief, however strange or unexpected, so come to this city of delight and surprise. Come and be fed. Be wowed. And be welcomed. So hopefully that gave you um, a better sense of the city, uh, what it has to offer, um, and hopefully gets you even more excited to arrive to Seattle this summer. Um, so just wanted to get into some more logistics um, around your arrival to Seattle, what the Institute might look like, um, and talk a little bit about travel details as well. All right, so a couple um, pieces around um, your arrival. Just wanted to, um, hold on one second. I wanna make sure I'm sharing the right screen here after that video. Here we go. Okay, so your arrival to Seattle. Um, the Institute is gonna start um, Monday, July 8th, or July, yes, July 8th at 3 p.m. So the first commitment is at 3 p.m. So you wanna make sure that you are here and plenty of time to get to that first session. Um, I know several of you are coming from the East Coast, um, which is a long travel day. I fly back to New York often and um, it takes a long time um, to get from the East Coast over to um, Seattle on the West. So wanna make sure that everybody's planning accordingly to get here by 3 p.m. You wanna make sure that you your flight arrives by 2 p.m. really at the latest. It takes about 45 minutes or so on the light rail to get from SeaTac Airport to campus. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're playing enough time to make sure that you're here by 3 p.m. on that day. Um, we really want you to be here for that first session um, since it's really a welcome with your cluster. Um, so you'll meet your cluster beforehand. Some of you may have already um, virtually, but um, just wanna make sure that you are here for that introduction, that time to connect. Um, so it's really important that you're here by that, that first session at three. Um, so since a lot of you are traveling um, from the East Coast or, or further away, um, we do have an early arrival option that's available on July 7th. So if you just can't get here um, in time on that Monday or there's no flights that's going to get you here by 2 p.m. to SeaTac, you can always come the day before on July 7th. And that's, you know, the complimentary on us. Um, you can stay in your room in uh, our residence halls in a whole call where you'll be staying for the Institute. Um, so no worries if you need to come a day prior. Um, Seattle Tacoma Airport is the international airport. It's, it's huge, there's a lot of flights coming in and out. So hopefully you won't have too many issues coordinating. Um, and it's about, again, um, 30 minute drive, 45 minute light rail to campus. So there's a picture here of the light rail schedule. So from the SeaTac Airport, um, we're going to meet you at the airport um, and help coordinate um, your light rail ticket to make sure you have a light rail ticket to get to campus. Um, so no worries about transportation. We'll have that covered. Um, and we'll be there to welcome you, answer any questions that you have. One thing that can be confusing, and we'll talk about this a little bit closer to the Institute as well, is there's two light rail stops that are close to campus. One is the University of Washington that you see highlighted on there and one is the U District. You wanna make sure that you get off at the University of Washington light rail stop is uh, right by the Husky Stadium. Um, so we'll be there to meet you with shuttles um, to bring you over to Oak Hall, where you'll be staying in North Campus. Um, you wanna make sure you have that University of Washington stop, not the U District stop. The 
that was arrival. So now just to talk about departure is your coordinating flights and transportation to campus. So the, the last day of the institute will end um, late on Thursday night on July 11th is the banquet. And we'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes, um, but it ends pretty late. So about 9 p.m. or so. So you wanna make sure that you schedule your flight out, your transportation um, out the, on that July 12th date, um, not the 11th, um, since we'll be ending so late. So on the 12th, uh, we really suggest that you book a flight if you are flying out um, 8 a.m. or later even later, maybe better, um, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., just to make sure that you can get to the airport on time. And the first train departs at 5 a.m. Um, to get to the airport by 6 a.m. or so. Um, so again, um, you'll go from the Husky Stadium at University of Washington stop on the light rail um, to SeaTac. It takes you right to the airport. Um, just to talk a little bit about Seattle weather, um, whenever I talk to somebody who's not from Seattle, they um, really picture it. It just rains all day, every day, all the time. Um, and that's not the case, especially in the summer. Um, we do get our fair share of rain throughout the winter, but in the summer, it's generally sunny. Um, so rain does come. But overall, I would say um, very sunny, low to mid 70s is our average weather. Um, so Seattle in the summer is actually the perfect time to come. Um, it's beautiful. You really can't beat um, Seattle or Washington in the summer. So if you haven't been here, excited for you to see that. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about um, the University of Washington and Seattle's campus. Um, we were rated the most innovative public university in the world. Um, there are some brilliant minds here. Um, the students are phenomenal, academically focused, a lot of research going on, um, a lot of innovation. So it's just a really cool place to be. Um, campus is huge. You'll see that when you come, we'll do um, some campus tours as an option as well. Um, but 700 acres, really surrounded by water, um, beautiful place. Um, but very large campus, large student population. We have about 50,000 students that includes undergrads and graduates. Um, so large student population. Um, also, uh, of course, many of you may know, um, University of Washington is moving from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten. Uh, around um, the Christmas holiday, you may have seen um, the Boys in the Boat movie was released um, on Christmas Day. Um, and it's really based on the University of Washington's rowing team. And they competed in the 1936, I think it was, Summer Olympics. Um, if you haven't checked that out, um, I think it's a good movie, um, good reviews. Um, so maybe something to consider um, before you come. Um, and all, there's also a book um, around boys in the boat as well, if you're interested. All right, so we have a, another video for you. This video really talks about um, the amenities on campus, our dining program. Um, it's from our conference services team. So we'll talk a little bit about, uh, more about campus and, and what we offer. The University of Washington is the perfect location for your summer conference. With modern, affordable, fully furnished housing options and flexible dining packages, we offer one of the best values in the Northwest. We invite you to see what Seattle has to offer, from the world-famous Pike Place Market and iconic Space Needle to the shimmering waterfront and the snow-capped mountain ranges. Seattle displays a wonderful balance of urban amenity and natural wonder. The University of Washington campus is only 30 minutes from Seattle Tacoma International Airport and a 10 minute ride to downtown Seattle, making the UW campus a convenient central location for visitors. Whether you're planning an intimate academic retreat or a large scientific poster session, we have a broad range of venue choices for you. These include small study and large meeting rooms, high tech auditoriums, world class performance theaters, inviting banquet facilities, relaxing lounges and reception areas, and open-air patios. 
We understand the importance of having enough room and the right space to foster engagement. And we believe you will find the ideal space for your event at the University of Washington. In between meeting and exploring, we know your group will need to fuel up with a bite to eat. The UW Dining Team has an award-winning culinary and service staff. They can expertly deliver multiple dining options anywhere on campus. Whether you're interested in a quick lunch in one of our on-campus restaurants, a large formal gathering with multiple menu choices, or a quick coffee and pastry meeting break, UW Dining has it all. If fast-paced downtown Seattle isn't your style, there is also plenty to explore in your free time right here on campus. From a museum to an art gallery, waterfront activities, beautiful trails, and open fields, there's no shortage of unique experiences to enjoy during your stay. Our goal is to provide university conference guests with modern, comfortable, affordable accommodations with a wide range of dining options and convenient event services. Our resourceful, positive staff strives to be easy to do business with and focuses on excellent and timely customer service. We have decades of experience supporting on-campus conferences and we'll work with you every step of the way to make sure your conference is a successful, positive and unforgettable experience for you and your guests. Contact us today to get started. Okay, so before we um, continue on with some more logistics, we have one more last video for you. Um, it really introduces you to Oak Hall, which is where you'll be staying on campus um, during the Institute. Um, so just wanted to share some more information about the building and where you'll be staying while you're here. So I'm um, to share a little bit more information about the accommodations that you'll be staying in here at the University of Washington. Uh, again, you'll be staying at Oak Hall. So some information um, around that, you'll be in a single room. Um, so it'll be a single double or triple, but you'll have your own space. So I know many of you may have not slept in a residence hall room for a long time, um, but you will not be with a roommate. You'll have your own room um, as well as your own bathroom um, connected to the room. So that that part is nice. Um, there will be linens provided, so you do not need to bring, you know, pillows, sheets, um, those types of things. We'll make sure that we have that set up in your room for you when you arrive. Um, of course, internet, wireless internet is available. We'll share with you how to connect before your arrival and once you're on site as well. A um, thing to know about Seattle, since we're in the you know low, mid, upper 70s in the summer, um, there's no air conditioning. So it doesn't get that hot here usually. There's definitely some days of the summer where it gets quite warm, but on average in the 70s, um, there's no air conditioning in a lot of our buildings um, and not in the rooms. So a fan will be provided, but something to know, um, it does get cooler at night. 
and um, we'll talk about this in a minute, but our meeting space does have air conditioning, but something to know about your room as you're, you're sleeping at night has no AC. Um, there are laundry facilities um, in the building that you're welcome to use though. Um, so that is a many that we'll offer here as well. I want to talk a little bit about the clusters. Um, so you may have met your cluster already. Um, I know a lot of the faculty have already reached out and have scheduled meetings with clusters. If you haven't yet, it's okay, that's coming. Um, but each cluster has five participants and then one faculty member. Um, the clusters are really integral to the NHGI experience. Um, it's really meant for you to have a strong cohort, get to know those um, cluster members and participants really well. Um, really connect with faculty, really continue the learning, um, even outside of the sessions um, through discussion and continuous engagement. Um, and part of that is living together as well. Um, so this is a floor in Oak Hall. So it just gives you a sense of what the clusters may look like um, and where you'd be staying. And then there's also um, a lot of lounges in each of our buildings where you'll have the opportunity to connect um, meet um, and continue those discussions um, throughout the Institute. This room here, the Oak Denny room, you're going to spend a lot of time uh, most days throughout each of the each day of the Institute. Um, it is a beautiful space. Uh, hopefully you can see that from the picture here, but um, out over those windows or I'm um, looking out of those windows is Denny Field. Um, great green space um, in the summer, I'm sure, definitely during the academic year when the sun's out, there are students out there playing games, hanging out, um, talking, just relaxing, um, beautiful space, um, high engagement. There's a lot of greenery in that area. So it's just a beautiful space to be. Um, the room itself is also just an amazing place to host meetings and events. Um, so you'll you'll see the picture there. Again, it's air conditioning or air conditioned. Um, so it'd be nice over the summer uh, if it does get warm in July. Um, so yes, beautiful space. Wi-Fi is available, large screen um, to display the presentations, um, surround sound. So it'll be a nice space uh, to have each of the sessions throughout the Institute. Um, a couple of other notes that we want to highlight. Um, there's a hospitality lounge um, in the hall. Uh, we'll have snacks, drinks, um, you know, things that will help you uh, feel welcome, um, things that you may have forgot at home. Um, we'll try to have those things on hand. Um, it's also a place just to connect and hang out with other participants and faculty members as well. Um, another just note, um, dining will be a combination of catering and the dining center. We'll eat quite a bit at Center Table, which is one of our dining halls on North Campus. Uh, we'll also have some catering, um, mostly breakfast will be catered. Um, Wednesday night is a dinner in the city in Seattle. That's really the only meal that you're responsible for in terms of payment um, throughout the, the Institute, except for travel days. Um, so just something to note there. And we also have a fitness center on campus that's run by Housing and Food Services. It's a bit of a walk, um, but uh, you will have access to that fitness center and we'll, we'll share with you where that is when you arrive. A um, couple amenities um, near campus, the Burke Milk Gilman Trail, another beautiful spot, especially in the summer um, when the sun's out, people are biking, um, walking, running on that trail. Um, it's 20 miles. Um, it's just um, 0.3 miles from Oak Hall, so pretty close. Um, so if you don't want to go to the fitness center, but still want a recreational place to be or exercise, this is a good option. All right, so next we're going to go into the schedule just to have a sense of what the Institute looks like and what you'll be doing day to day. One thing to note, you'll notice on the schedule already, but we'll start pretty early in the morning and we'll end pretty late at night. So we try to make sure that there's enough breaks throughout um, and uh, make sure you have time to, to disconnect a little bit and take a break. But something to know is it's pretty, 
pretty booked. Um, so we want to make sure if you're coming to Seattle um, and want to do any sightseeing, you're doing that either before the Institute or after the Institute. There won't be a lot of time um, during the day or even in the evenings um, to be able to do that or get out into the city. Um, that Wednesday night, though, dinner on the town will give you a sense of, of uh, the city of Seattle and get out to dinner um, in the city as well, which would be good. Um, so Monday, July 8th, the first day of the Institute, um, there's some faculty pieces in the morning. So again, um, you want to make sure you're here by 3 p.m. That's the first session for participants. Um, so that first session is really a cluster welcome. You'll get connected with your cluster, your faculty member, um, and then we'll break for dinner. Dinner is going to be on campus. Um, barbecue theme style is what we're thinking now. Um, our uh, special events committee is coordinating that um, currently and coming up with ideas of exactly what we want to do, but that will be a great welcome, time for networking, getting to know other participants and faculty at the Institute as well, um, and seeing a little bit of North Campus. Tuesday is, the, is day two, so a lot of our breakfasts are catered right in the Oak Denny room, especially since it's pretty early at 7 a.m., um, and then we'll go into sessions that day. So we have leadership and professional development, politics, assessment and planning, and belonging, um, diversity, equity, inclusion. So um, another piece to note is we'll also have associate sessions throughout the Institute. The associate sessions are really partners for housing, um, vendors that we work with or that campuses work with that really offer products and services that campuses purchase or services that are provided. Um, it's really to learn more about that process and that connection um, with vendors and partners outside of higher education. In the afternoon, we'll have um, content synthesis and integration. So we have a faculty member who's really going to be at the Institute to bring all of the pieces together that you're learning um, and talk about how that applies to our practice. That night, Tuesday night, you're actually going to have cluster time and then your dinner will be delivered to your room. And of course, we'll um, take orders before then um, to make sure that we get you what you need. Um, but that night will end pretty late at 9 p.m. with cluster time. Moving into Wednesday, we have breakfast again, then go into some of the sessions around resources, which is really around uh, facilities, budget, finances, occupancy management. Um, we'll talk about current issues and um, risk management as well. We'll have some breakout topics at lunch. Um, that you can engage with with other participants at the Institute. And then um, cluster time and then that Wednesday night is night in the town. So we'll have different restaurants that we recommend and um, that you can go to. We'll also have a light rail pass for you um, to make sure that you can get um, transportation to the various restaurants um, within the city as well. Thursday, um, we have the human resources session and then a faculty panel. Um, we'll also have affinity spaces at lunch on that day. Thursday afternoon, one piece I want to highlight, you'll have um, individual time with faculty members, so one-on-one -on -one time. There's also an option for a campus tour, uh, so highly recommend that if you want to explore the University of Washington campus a little bit more. Um, so we'll be offering campus tours. Thursday night is the last night of the Institute. So we'll have a banquet that night. It'll be more formal setting. Um, you're welcome to dress more formally or not, completely up to you. Um, we'll have uh, some recep or reception, some photos, and then we'll have the closing banquet, um, which will be seven to 9 p.m. on Thursday night with some speakers, um, some great food, um, and some connection time as well. One thing to know um, throughout the Institute, a lot of people ask about dress, what they should wear. Something to know about the Pacific Northwest is pretty casual. Um, so really it's up to you uh, what you would like to wear. Um, casual dress is fine, business, business casual is fine. It's really whatever you're most comfortable in. All right, a couple of pieces. I'm looking ahead and then we'll get to um, questions that you have. 
So some things to be thinking about now, now that we're at the end of April and then early May, you really want to consider um, booking your travel. Now that you hopefully have a lot more information around arrival times, departure times, and what to consider, um, especially if you're flying in. I know some people may be driving in or taking the train, but especially if you're flying in, you want to book your flight um, as soon as possible. We're also collecting that information. I'll put the link in the chat here in a minute, um, just around collecting your transportation schedules, your flight times, and when you're arriving to make sure that we're able to greet you. Uh, so I shared this earlier, but um, you'll also have cluster meetings with faculty, um, at least one. Um, so they'll be reaching out. They haven't already. I know some already have though. Um, so you'll meet them before our June meeting. Um, on June 18th, we'll have a faculty and participant meeting and we'll send out some reminders before that. But June 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you wanna mark that on your calendar. Um, and then July 8th, of course, um, you'll all be arriving um, into Seattle or the 7th if you need that early arrival day. And then July 12th is the last day of the Institute. Or that's departure day. July 11th is the last day. Couple other pieces. Um, we want you to, if you're able and uh, open to this, is downloading the Kuhuai events app. We're gonna have a lot of communication go out through the events app. Um, so for um, iPhone users, I put the, um, the picture here so you can see the icon in terms of what you're looking for in the app store. Um, but if you can download that app as soon as possible, we're gonna start I'm doing a lot of introductions of faculty, the coordinating committee, information about Seattle, um, arrival. So uh, we don't want you to miss any information about the Institute. Um, so that will be where a lot of information is sent. Um, so you definitely want to download that. And then I'll put this link in the chat here in a second. But once you book your travel, you want to let us know um, what that looks like when you're arriving, date, time, um, how you're getting here. We want to make sure that we can coordinate um, any transportation needs, shuttles to Oak Hall, um, and make sure that we're ready for your arrival. Before we get to questions, just wanted to share my contact information. I've sent a couple emails, just reminders about this meeting. Um, so hopefully you have my email already. Um, but if not, it's vvande2 at uw.edu. Um, so if you have any questions about getting here, transportation, what the Institute is going to be like, what Oak Hall is going to be, um, what we offer, you're welcome to email me at any time. Um, I can always connect you to one of our host committee members as well, if I don't have the answer. Um, but you're welcome to reach out, answer, or ask any questions you have, and we'll get that answer to you. All right, so... From here, we wanted to open it up. If you have specific individual questions, you're welcome to email those or ask at a different time, later time. But wanted to see what questions you have about the Institute, Seattle, the University of Washington campus, um, really anything you have that you think um, all participants might be able to benefit from. I'm gonna stop sharing here too. Any questions that we can answer? Vicki, there's a question about an access code or email link for the app, and maybe Spencer can speak to that. Oh, yes, I see that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Love, love the access codes. Let's take a look. Um, Alex, in, uh, in an email that went out, I believe, last Friday, uh, pushing out the app, that you should have received, uh, it would have an access code in there. I can certainly follow up with an email to get you that again. Thanks, Spencer. I'm gonna put the link in the chat as well to um, book your, when you book your travel um, to let us know. So I'll include that right now.
Any other questions? There's a question in the chat about recommendations for things to bring and or whether we will provide a packing list ahead of time. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, we will provide a packing list ahead of time. We have some newsletters that will go out um, with more information as we get closer to the Institute, but we will have a packing list. Um, we do suggest, you know, of course, something to write with, notebooks, definitely. Um, welcome to bring your laptop as well. Um, we asked, you know, during the Institute, um, I think it's really important to make sure that um, we know that your jobs are all busy since you uh, work in housing. Um, so it can be difficult to step away from campus and um, try to really focus and engage in the Institute. But um, it's really important for all participants and just the learning that takes place um, to really be engaged in the Institute um, and focus on that. And then, of course, if you have to step away um, to take care of something on your campus, you could do that as well. Um, but yes, laptops, welcome to bring a laptop. Um, but we will um, send out a packing list just so you have that information and just so you know exactly what's going to be in the room as well and with that linen packet um, and, you know, some of those pieces. So we'll send that out ahead of time. have a question. Sure. Um, if we need accommodations for anything, like I know for housing accommodations, I've been in contact with you all, um, but if there's additional accommodations maybe for um, things with the schedule or different things that we're attending, um, how do we best request those or communicate our needs around that? Yeah, you're, you're welcome to send this to me or we can connect individually too if it's better just to hop on a Zoom call quickly. Um, happy to do that or um, over email, whatever works best. Um, and we can um, touch base and, and just make sure that everything's coordinated and set. So yes, feel free to, to reach out anytime. Happy to discuss that more. Thank you. So much for joining us today. We're very excited to welcome you um, in Seattle at the University of Washington in July. Um, of course, if you have questions before then or before June meeting, feel free to reach out. Um, anything that you have, happy to answer and coordinate and make sure that you feel welcome um, and you have everything that you need before your arrival and when you get to campus. Um, so don't hesitate to contact me. Um, and again, I'll get you connected to one of our committee members if I can't answer something. Um, so thank you again. Um, I appreciate your time today and excited to see you in our June meeting and then in July for the Institute. Thank you all.